Well, good good morning everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. It is a chilly, gloomy Monday morning here in the city of Philadelphia and I am headed out of the city, up 95 North, and we're going to go to some thrift shops, but I've got a big surprise at the end of this video. Something you've been asking me about, you've been wanting updates. Just bear with me as we go thrifting first and then stay tuned for this big surprise at the very end of the video. Now I'm going to tune out so that I'm not talking while I'm driving, but I'll see you in the goodwill. Stay tuned. Well, I missed the opening bell. It's about 9.05 here at the Second Avenue Thrift Shop in North Philadelphia. Uh, let's go get a cart, hand sanitize, mask on, and we'll see what happens. Wow, look at this chicken set down here. What in the heck is this? Is this for soup? I mean, it's not old. It can't be old. No, it's not old at all, but it's cute. Temptations something something. I guess it's a little like a soup terrine and then all these little chickens. Mm-hmm. Well, I like that, but I don't buy stuff from that era. Look at this. EAPG. Is this an old? That's, that's an unusual six dollars. I wonder what the colors are today. Um, I don't know. That's kind of, that's very regal. You guys like that? I'm not sure what I think about that. EAPG pitcher. Hmm, I think I'll put that down for a minute. Here's a reamer. Uh, a clear one. That is uh, $3.99 for that one. Am I in focus? Okay, I am now. Uh. Oh, drat. There's a powder jar without its lid. Now that is cut glass. Mm-hmm. I can feel that. That's a nice one there. It's old, too. Cut glass. Um, dresser for the dresser top. Uh, but anyway, there's a Pyrex lid. And that is $2.99. I probably should get that. I do like to stockhouse. Is it the word stockhouse? Stockpile. <laughs> I like to stockpile uh, Pyrex lids. Because you you know you never know. You get the dish and you don't have the lid. That's that bunnykins uh, stuff. That's cute. What is she bringing out? Oh, she's bringing out the Christmas pudding. See that? The mama bunny has the uh, Christmas pudding. They must be English. Now let me see. We're looking for... Oh, you know. Well, you know what I'm looking for. And I'm not seeing it. 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s. And even some mid-century. Look at these. Oh, and they have saucers too. These are Pyrex. Those are sweet. Mm, I wish they had more of a mid-century color, but I like that shape. I don't see it every day. These little coffee cups. Here are the saucers. $14.99 for the set. Which means you are getting all of these saucers here. <laughs> some underplates and some cups. Now it looks like there's only one, two, three, four, five, six... Looks like there's only seven saucers and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, like 13 or so of the cups. How many plates? Mm, maybe 10 plates or so. So, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, the pattern is kind of okay. I wish it were pink or blue. That's what it looks like. Hmm a lot of dishes to take home and sometimes you're in the mood for that and sometimes you are not in the mood for that am I in the mood for that today oh look at this this is some kind of a biscuit jar it doesn't look terribly old uh, yeah I don't believe that it is let's see 
That looks like uh, transfer wear. No, I don't think this is that old. Nope, I see a barcode on it. Okay, well, it is pretty anyway. Okay, I shifted back here to the lamp department. Uh, the store isn't very busy. There's actually only maybe 15 people here, and most of them are in the clothing section. So I wanted to get into the electronics and the bric-a-brac and all of that as quickly as possible. I'm not, I'm scanning along here, but I'm not seeing anything that I would be interested in buying. I certainly don't see anything that fits the era that I like to collect. Uh, I always see lots of these big 1940s, 50s, 60s lamps with the Capitamonte stuff stuck on there. And they're not, they're not big sellers in terms of lamps. They just really aren't, and they're huge. Okay, it doesn't look like anything's gonna happen in the lamp department. Uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And then this particular store doesn't carry furniture. So, well, <laughs> that's all you get. You get this one little strip and there's not that much to be had. That's a mid-century chair there, 1940s, 50s. There's a, it's a nice little magazine rack from probably the 40s into the 50s. Now, I don't need that, but it's a nice one. Your grandparents had one of those filled with Life magazine and good housekeeping. Okay, there are the electronics. Oh, they're screaming in here. Uh, you can see it's a pretty big store. Uh, well, I did pick up something off the shelf. I found three Ritz blue plates by Anchor Hawking. Uh, not Anchor Hawking, I'm sorry, by Hazel Atlas. And uh, it's $3, so it's a dollar per plate. This is not a big deal, uh, but they, these date to the 30s, these cobalt blue plates. And it's not the modern tone pattern. I can't remember what that is. I'll look it up when I get out in the car because I have my travel size depression glass book out there because I don't know the older I get the more of these patterns I'm forgetting but it is 1930s Ritz blue hazel atlas uh, oh, let's go back and look again at the oh no 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 what about you I mean if it's if it's clean no mm -mm, it's not my size anyway <laughs> oh dear Well, over here in the glass vase department, unfortunately today we have the typical array of florist vessels, which we see. And so we don't have anything here that would be of any resale value. They're pretty vases, you know, but it's just not something that would sell in the, in the resale line. That has an interesting color to it. Mm-hmm. I'm looking down here for any more um, unique pressed glass. I don't see any. That piece is not old. Let's look at... Uh... Now, I do like these ashtrays. They have an unusual sort of peachy uh, color. Um, and I'm in the store under these fluorescent lights. I don't know what color they're appearing over the TV screen, but it's sort of a yellowy, peachy sort of a color. Um, there's wear on the bottom of them. They're $2.99. And these are not on sale. So ashtrays, I usually don't... Uh, I usually don't buy ashtrays. I know there's all kinds of different uses for them that people are into. But still, an ashtray is an ashtray. $2.99. I like the design. I like the colors too, but... Mm, I think we'll say no to those. Uh, some random wire things over there, and this is the wooden department. I don't know, I may just be walking out of here with my three little Ritz blue plates. That might be it. Okay, first thrift shop. Nyeh. All I came away with are my three Ritz blue Hazel Atlas plates. 
And thanks to a subscriber who several, several months ago sent me the pocket guide here, which I keep in my glove compartment, um, I quickly looked it up and found out the Aurora pattern. Now the Aurora is one I don't see that much, not great value, but somewhere out there somebody is collecting Aurora by Hazel Atlas. And it's a 1930s pattern. I think most of the time <clears throat> I find uh, the modern tone. So $1 per little plate. I decided to leave all that Pyrex there. Now, uh, the thing is, you know, there were only, what, seven saucers and like 20 teacups. So uh, I could have put a little set together of maybe six with the six underplates, saucers and the cups for $14. But uh, I just, as I said before, sometimes you just don't want to lug all of that stuff home. You have to have storage and there's a lot involved in uh, shipping and packing all of that so I sort of just left it there for somebody else to discover okay so now I am in I'm gonna have a, um, a sip of this and I'm in my parking lot waiting for my uh, restore store to open I've moved to another area here and I've got about five minutes and we're headed into the restore so I stopped and got a coffee but I always travel with my own ginger snaps Well, this time I am on location at a Goodwill store, and the first thing that I'd like to show you is a 1930s chrome plate. Now, these would be uh, oftentimes sold with the coffee pots and the creams and sugars. Um, it's got that typical 1930s etching on there or engraving, all machine done, a uh, uh, little Art Deco style on the handles. That's only $3, and I'll probably buy it. Usually these don't survive with the uh, with the coffee sets, and I and I, I like these, and I can always match them with um, coffee pots and creams and sugars. Uh, so it's probably Foreman Foreman or Farber. I'll stick I'll stick that down in there, and then I also see the little uh, cocktail stems here in chrome but they're asking uh, too much for this. That's $7, and I can actually find these cheaper than that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There are five of them. And they came with those cocktail shaker sets that were so popular in the 1930s. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see now. I think sometimes you like me to just leave the camera on as I scale, as I scan the aisles and, um, but I, I feel like that's just boring. So I don't know, do you want me to, would you rather me turn the camera off and then only turn it back on when I zoom in on something that I want to tell you about? Or do you like it when I leave the camera on and you get to look at everything with me? Or just do my thing. <laughs> Either way. Oh, here's one of those bun warmers from the, like the 60s. 60s. Okay, take a look at that. Now, is it Wedgwood or not? Of course it's not Wedgwood. You, you knew that already. But it's in the Wedgwood style, isn't it? Well, it's made in Japan, probably before the war. They did a pretty good job on it. We just have an embossed Japan mark on the bottom. You can see right there. There's no damage on it, and it is $5. I would sort of guess that this piece would only sell for well it might sell for fifteen dollars or so so there's probably a ten dollar profit in that um and that would be easy to ship five dollars yeah this is what i go through when i'm trying to decide if i'm actually going to buy something or not let's think about it i think i'll put it in my cart and give that some thought 
Okay, quick review. The Restore store was closed, is closed on Mondays, and I had forgotten about that, so poo-poo. So I did move on to a Goodwill, which is down the road. I don't normally go to that Goodwill because I don't normally find anything there. Uh, but the 1930s chrome-plated tray, probably Farber Brothers. Sometimes it's hard to see that on the back. Uh, that was a plus because it's only three dollars and I need that with my coffee sets. And then the only other thing I bought, and I did actually go ahead and buy the 1930s Made in Japan. This grew on me. I'm not a huge fan of Jasper Ware, personally. I don't care for the, not bisque, but the matte finish of the of the of the pottery itself and a lot of times it gets dirty it seems to pick pick up fingerprints and dirt and whatnot I'm just it just doesn't call it doesn't speak to me that one was speaking to me and it said hey take me with you so I actually like this better than Jasper Ware made in Japan in the 1930s very low fired sort of like almost a paste yeah, not a porcelain, but a very low-fired, uh, soft kind of a ceramic. Five dollars. It's got crazing on it. I think that's got some character. Um, and I, I, it should sell for you know fifteen dollars or so. So okay, there's a there's a ten dollar bill profit in it. That'll pay for my coffee and bridge fare. Look, look, look. Who remembers this? I think it's I think it's that uh, Dixie Dogwood Dogwood Dixie is that right? I had several pieces of it. Oh, maybe a year ago, and uh, I <laughs> my former college roommate who I haven't talked about in a while, I sent him a picture of it, and he said it was so ugly it would make your food taste bad. Now, and he's a Southerner, so don't get mad at me. Uh, he's actually from North Carolina. I don't think it's that bad. And I ended up selling several pieces of it to some lovely folks in Texas. <laughs> but isn't it funny how we all have different likes and dislikes? Uh, what floats one person's boat will sink someone else's boat. That makes the world go round the spice of life. I didn't buy any of that because I just didn't want a whole bunch of dishes. Now, don't be fooled by this. I think this stuff was made and sold at, is can be bought at the IKEA store. And boy, it sure does look like something from the depression. And it looks like uh, the amethyst glass that Hazel that Hazel Atlas made. And it's sort of in has a 1930s look, but that stuff is not old. Seems to me I remember that that's something made by IKEA. Mm-hmm. So wandering around in this particular store, um, then I, let's see, I left that shop and went to another one. Ooh, the 1980s. Let me feather my hair and get out my Cindy Lauper records. Who had this? No, my parents were more of the colonial revival type. We didn't have that. But look, speaking of Colonial Revival, right next to this 1980s dining room furniture is this poor little uh, sewing stand. Not the Martha Washington style, but a variation on it made out of mahogany. And they wanted $25 for it. Look, it's got stuff inside. What do you call all of this little stuff? Is it notions, sewing notions, or accoutrement? I like saying accoutrement. You know, it makes me sound makes me sound sophisticated. <laughs> uh, ooh, now sometimes you'll find a silver plated or a sterling silver thimble. No, I didn't see any in there. There's a drumstick. No, that's how you darn your socks. Oh, does anybody sit in their in their big old club chair at night darning socks like that out of your little mahogany sewing stand i think we just throw them away and buy new ones well surprise 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 i mean what is typically a really junky uh this is a salvation army 
and I'm usually at Goodwill and Second Avenue thrift shop and small independent thrift shops around the Philly area, but not usually at Salvation Army like I am today. But anyway, I ran in here. Uh, the only thing that I find in here are four grill plates, and this is in the cameo pattern, also sometimes called ballerina. Uh, we'll get them outside and I'll try to zoom in on them. But it's a pattern that most of you are familiar with because it's got the little dancing ballerina girl. Uh, where is she? She's hiding in one of those cartouches somewhere. <laughs> is it a cartouche? <laughs> I'm ready to put my touche in my car. Okay, let's grab these plates. S uh, $8? No, $7. Uh, and this is a green glass that will glow. Grill plates, what do you guys think about grill plates? You love them or you hate them? I think. You know, some people, they do not want their green peas to touch their mashed potatoes. They're funny that way. Ooh, look at the old rocker. Okay. Nope, don't need that. Let's go. Okay, I have changed locations. Uh, I crossed the bridge from Pennsylvania back into New Jersey, and I'm at a Goodwill, and I spy this 1930s um, dripolator, which, you, they, they, oh my gosh, they made so many different forms. Um, this one was okay. Uh, I put it in my cart. It was only $5. These were popular in the 30s. Fraunfelter, is that right? Yeah, China. Uh, missing the dripolator part, they almost always are. Uh, and it's kind of a ivory color with green. I put it in my cart and then I ended up not buying it. Um, you know, I just, you know, sometimes you just change your mind. And I bought some other things uh, and I ended up putting that uh, teapot back. But it was from the 30s, and it didn't have any chips in it. Yeah, I know. I probably should have gotten it. Ooh. Now, uh, here's something else I didn't buy. Remember when butter came in those big, uh, instead of sticks, those big uh, one, it was at a one-pound chunk? Well, there you go. And that butter dish wasn't, ex I don't know what was wrong with me. Um, what was it, Two ninety nine. And I put that back. I should have bought that as well, you big dummy. Uh, let's see. And there is a piece of pink, pink depression glass. Mm hmm. That was $7. Yeah, I do not know why I didn't. I'm okay that I didn't buy the teapot, but I really wish now that I had bought that butter dish. Although, you know, I don't know. People use them, I guess. If it were green, I would have gotten it. Okay, what now? You could tell. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do you see it? It's upside down. And there it is. It's a black glass base or pedestal. You know I bought that for two ninety nine. Many of the glass companies made these. Fenton made a lot of them and other companies as well. And um, there were no chips on that one and it was a nice big size. So that goes all the way back to the late 20s into the 30s. They were very popular. There's another little cottage, cottage ware teapot. I know that you still saw that uh, dripolator pot in my cart, but I, I did end up putting it back. So the music was really pumping in this store and that's why I'm doing a voiceover. Ooh, a tumble weave. You know what a tumble weave is? I didn't say tumble weed. I said tumble weave. <laughs> this tin Caught my eye, but I was fairly certain it was a reproduction, and it is. Okay, some just random 1930s creamers. Well, that uh, sugar bowl, rather. That's a nice one with the etching and the encrusted gold, but just one. That makes me think of imperial glass, or maybe Jeanette with that iridescence on it. 
What is that? Oh, Italy. I thought maybe it might be a Japan piece. Turned out not to be. These are usually West uh, Westmoreland. Um, and I think when I turn it upside down, we'll see the Westmoreland, uh, an old sticker on there. Is that what it says? Yeah, Westmoreland. So milk glass, a variation on the bride's box or bride's basket. It's got grapes on it and it has a gold decoration. It was okay. That, of course, is missing its wooden top. A 1930s Japan salt container, salt keeper. Just want to show you one of the variations there on the Made in Japan um, back stamps, of which there are just, oh, you can't even count them all. Mm hmm. I did find, let's see, yeah, I found something in here I didn't film. Uh, because I'm doing research on it, and that's coming up this week. You're going to see that in a haul. I think I found some very interesting 1920s glass in here. I love that swan. I didn't pick it up. Hello, pig. There was a piggy bank there, in case you didn't see that. Typical vases here from florists. That's a, that's, mm, well, I didn't get it. It's milk glass, no mark on it. That's a, a quote unquote older piece. And then I just wanted to look at a grill plate in the uh, typical blue willow pattern, but I liked the back stamp on this. This is one I hadn't seen before. Ideal grill plate made in the USA. Five dollars for that one plate. And then, not really flow blue, but a souvenir plate. Uh, probably made in England. A lot of these were. Yes, it was. Uh, had a big chip on the back. And that's okay, but historical scenes of Philadelphia. Just not something that I would want to hold on to and not really much resale value in it, but a pretty plate anyway. Oh, look at this. Now, I, I didn't see it at first. I can't wait to try to find out who made it. Um, doesn't it have a 3D effect? Look, there's silver overlay on the top, but then they cut those stars on the back and did the black. Oh, wait, do you see this? Wait till I show it to you again. Now, sadly, it's missing. This would have been an underplate for a cheese and cracker, and it's missing its cracker co a cheese compote. Okay, dollhouse update. I don't have a lot to say other than you can see how massive the dollhouse is uh, compared to the back of my truck. It's been in storage now for the winter months, uh, now that it's, um, well, springtime. I'm getting ready to move it out of here and into the workshop, and I'm going to be finishing up the, well, really starting the restoration and getting this thing ready to decide exactly what I'm going to do with it. Uh, and so that's all in, going to be in future videos in the old curiosity shop. I can't wait to get started on this house. That's that. Thank you for joining me, everyone. 
Wow, did you like what was in the back of my truck? I'm gonna tell you more about that later. Now you might be you might say to yourself, well, you don't have any room for that. What are you gonna do with that? Mm, that's a surprise I hope to spring on you sometime, oh, sometime soon. Okay, and also, Lots coming up this spring and summer with that dollhouse restoration and other projects that I'm working on as well. Also, there were things today that I found in the thrift shops that I put in my cart off camera and you didn't see. So if you watch and you enjoy and you're not a subscriber, I wish you would become a subscriber. Turn on that ding dong bell and you'll not miss one exciting moment. I'll be back probably tomorrow to show you all of the things that I bought today as well as that estate sale haul and a flea market haul from over the weekend. So there's going to be lots of vintage items and antique items to look at and enjoy together in the old curiosity shop. Okay, that's it. I'm Scott. Thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now.